Volvo proudly proclaimed that few people have saved as many lives as Nils Bolin. And they are right. Nils Bolin is the little-known Volvo engineer who invented the V-Type 3-point safety belt in 1959, and saw his innovation through to universal adoption across the motor industry. His new cross-strap design made seat belts much easier to use, and much safer too. It is hard now to imagine cars without them. Point two zero one nine is the 60th anniversary of Bolin's breakthrough idea, and one worth celebrating. The Swedish company carved out a space in the competitive car industry by making driver and passenger safety a core part of its brand at a time when this was an afterthought for many car makers. Volvo's president at the time was Gunnar Engelau, an engineer himself, who had suffered direct personal loss from a road traffic accident. A relative had died, partly because of shortcomings in the two-point belt design, which was not even standard feature in cars at the time. This personal tragedy encouraged Engelau to find a better solution, poaching Nils Bolin from rival firm Saab, and setting about this problem as a matter of urgency. Volvo would invent a better solution, and be the first carmaker to standardize it. There were two major problems with the historic two-point belt design, which crosses the lap only. Firstly, the human pelvis is hinged. A single strap doesn't restrain the torso, leaving passengers vulnerable to severe head, chest and spinal injuries in a collision. Positioned badly, the belt can crush your internal organs on impact. They don't work very well. Secondly, people don't want to wear them. Until Boland's commission, mid-century seat belts were clumsy and uncomfortable. If you can't persuade people to wear a restraint, it turns out that they are useless. Much credit to Bolin for making seat belts much more comfortable then, and much easier to use. You could now buckle up across the chest and waist, using just one hand. This seems simple enough. But even with the new design improvements, it took six years of promotion to persuade a minority of Swedes to use the new design. This was not going to be an overnight success. Innovations like this can require many millions of dollars in research and development and marketing investment. Of course, Volvo went to great lengths to test the efficacy of this invention in the 1950s and 1960s, running hundreds of experiments, and researching tens of thousands of accidents to verify the efficacy. But giving people scientific data is not enough to persuade them to make a change in their lives. Mass adoption very often requires an emotional, or cultural, paradigm shift. Seat belt usage in native Sweden did eventually grow, from an astonishingly low 25% rate in 1965, to over 90% of Swedish car users by 1975. This reminds us that invention and innovation are not the same thing, the latter requires adoption to qualify, making innovation invariably risky.